homework time, yes! Happy, happy homework time is here yet again. Let's start in the proper way, in the customary manner, and write our names at the top of the paper. I'll write my name, you write yours. And then write today's date. If you're going to do something, might as well do it well. I'll write today, you write the actual date, where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Woo! You will be glad to know. Okay, I, I'm with you. I feel your pain, literally, because it's my pain, too. Uh, the past couple of homeworks have been a little brutal. Long and lots of writing. You'll be glad to hear that Lesson 7 here whew, backs it off a little bit, okay? It's, it's, we will not be here for an hour. All right. Each rectangle, our instructions say, and we see these rectangles, represents one. The shaded unit fractions like this one shaded, right, shaded, 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 have been decomposed into smaller units. Those are our horizontal dashed lines. So our, our task is to express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. We see the first one's done, so it's going to look like that. So let's look at that first one. We started off with one half, drew the line of decomposition. So one half we made into two rows. So remember, harken back to that, I think it was lesson four with the how many rows. So times two. So we start off basically when there was one row when this was before that line was drawn, right? And so now it's times two, two times as many rows. So one times two is two, two times two is four, one half is equal to two fourths, and that's exactly what the model shows. So look at B. Before the lines of decomposition were drawn, and Okay, in fact, if we look at C and D, let's kind of look ahead. All of these start off as what fraction? They all start off as one half. Okay, so that, that's going to make life a little easier here for us. So they all start off as one half. Now, how many rows uh, was this decomposed into? One, two, three, four. So if we were to take that one half, and I'm going to draw a long fraction bar just like they did over there and multiply it, watch the magic here, there are four rows there, right? By four-fourths. And you'll probably hear me say this too many times for your liking, but I'm going to nonetheless. Four-fourths is equal to one. When we multiply by one, we do not change the value of the number. In this case, just its form, the way it looks. Um, so we're just cutting that cake. There's no more or less cake. We're multiplying by one. It's the same amount of cake. Mmm, cake. All right. Happy birthday to you. All right, so uh, 1 times 4, of course, is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. And now here's the mathematical moment. Mathematical, to uh, coin a phrase or to steal it from Arthur Benjamin. Um, so look at the model. 4 out of 8. Hallelujah, it works. Look at C. We started off with 1 half, right? So that 1 half is equal to, well, if we take that one half, and how many rows are there? One, two, three, four, five, six rows. So if we multiply that one half by six sixths, which is equal to one, so we're changing not the value, but just the form of the fraction, what do we end up with? Yes, six twelfths. And again, mathematical moment, Look at the model, 6 out of 12. <gasps> wow, math makes sense. All right, and look at D. We started off with 1 half. Told you we were going to go much faster tonight. All right, so we take that 1 half. Now, how many rows are there? 1, 2. My eyes are bugging out. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Did I count right? I hope so. If not, you can leave me comments correcting me. 7 rows. And so 1 times 7 is 7, and 2 times 7 is 14. Mathematical moment. Look at the model. 7 out of 14 are shaded. Hot dog. 1 half equals 7 fourteenths, and also equals 6 twelfths, and 4 eighths, and 2 fourths, and many other wild and wonderful fractions as well. Boom! Let's go on. And here in 2 A and B, our instructions are to decompose the shaded fractions into smaller units using the error models right there. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. So, no problem. First, let's decompose this first shaded fraction. So what are we starting with here? 
we have one shaded out of one, two, three. So we would call that the fraction one third. And since we know we're going to have to do it, let's just go ahead and set up that number sentence using multiplication before we even go ahead and do the first step, because we know this is what we're looking at, right? All right, so uh, for that first step, let's start off simply, and let's just decompose it into two rows. So I'm going to draw a dashed horizontal line here. So now we have two rows, um, so that's why I'm going to multiply by two halves here. One-third times two halves, well, one times two is two, and three times two is six, and it's easy to check yourself. We started with one-third, and do we now have two six? We have one, two, out of two, four, six. Everything checks out. Over here, let's do something a little different. Let's go ahead and uh, write down what we're starting with. We have one shaded out of four, so one-fourth. And as we did before, let's go ahead and just set up the multiplication we know we'll be doing. So we're just doing sort of our own little fill in the blanks here. And let's make three rows on this one. It doesn't make anything more difficult. So we'll just draw two horizontal dashed lines. And then when we multiply, we'll multiply by three thirds because we have three rows there. It's so because the one, if you look at it this way, the one of the one fourth is now three, correct? And the four parts are now four times three. So one times three, of course, is a three. And four times three is 12. So what we're saying is one fourth equals three twelfths. And when you look at the model, yes, we have three shaded out of three, six, nine, twelve. Everything checks out. Everything is beautiful. It's a wonderful world. Well, let's go on. Well, all right, here we go. Let's look at C. We have one out of one, two, three, four, five. So that, of course, is the fraction. One out of five, one fifth. And let's go ahead and do as we did in the last one and set up the multiplication we know we'll be doing. We know this little schema here. All right, it's going to look like that. And uh, let's, let's be adventuresome and actually decompose this into four rows. So I'll split it down the middle and then split each of those in half. With my little happy little dashed lines. Happy little dashed lines. And so I split it into or decomposed it into four rows. So I'll be multiplying by four fourths. Multiplication is easy here, right? One times four is four. Five times four. 20. Okay, it's 20. Mathematical moment. Look at your area model. We started with one out of five. Now what's shaded in? One, two, three, four out of 20. <gasps> it works. Math works. And now in this one, we have one out of eight. So we're starting with the fraction one eighth. Excellent. Let's go ahead and set up the multiplication we know we'll be doing. X, X. All right. So uh, let's, let's be a, a little lazy on this one and just decompose this one in half. So we're multiplying, we're creating two rows. So that's why we're multiplying by two halves. I do not just pull these numbers out of nowhere. This is why back in lesson four, we talked about how many rows are there. So there's two rows. That's why I'm multiplying by two halves here. One times two is two. Eight times two is 16. Mathematical moment again, look at it. We started with one out of eight and now it's two out of 16. <gasps> Math works, hallelujah. Let's go on to the last one. Can you believe it? Flying. All right. Well, I confess I'm cheating on this one. I'm totally cheating. Sorry. I went back to 2B there and copy and pasted the one-fourth model so I didn't have to draw all that. But so what we need to do first, see in our instructions, is draw three different area models to represent one-fourth by shading. And so I've cheated on that step. There are my three area models You'll have to actually draw yours. Ha, ha, ha. Decompose, then, we will do shaded, the shaded fraction into first, here in A, into eighths, then into twelfths, then into sixteenths. And we'll use multiplication to show how each fraction is equivalent to one-fourth. Okay, so here, here's what I want to do to start with, okay, so that we're really thinking this out. Um, so if I'm starting with one-fourth on each of these, and this one, I'm going to go to eighths. So even before I get to multiplication, I just want to think about what it is I'm doing. And this one, 
I'm going to go, I'm going to find an equivalent fraction in twelfths. And then in C, I'm going to start with that same one-fourth and find an equivalent fraction in sixteenths. Okay? Just stop there for a minute. All right. Now let's set up uh, that whole multiplication schema that we know we're going to be needing. And I'm actually going to go one little step more. I know that I'm going to end up with eighths here, right? And then in this one, see, we're kind of doing all three at once here. Isn't that cool? Say yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Now scream. Uh-oh. I hope I can get you in trouble. Okay, now here in this one, we're going into twelfths. And now here, again, we're starting with one-fourth. And when we do our little multiplication dance, we know we're going to end up with sixteenths. And the reason I'm doing this before we even get to the model, which I know would be following the instructions in order, but bah instructions, bah, um, is to think about how we're going to decompose them. Because when we look at the relationship between four and eight, what is that relationship? Well, eight is twice four, right? It's two times as much. Ah, four times two. Ah, look, four. Ah, I'm going to multiply this by two halves. And you see, look, all everything clicks into place. Click. Four times two is eight. Oh, so let's just finish this while we're here. One times two is two. And that means that ah, this also will be two eighths. And this tells me how many rows do I need? Look right here. I need two rows for which I can draw one dashed line. That's why I'm doing it backwards here. So we know before we just start drawing lines on these models how many lines we're drawing and where. And now check yourself. We started with one fourth and now we have two shaded out of eight. By gum! All right. Now on this one we're going to twelfths. What's the relationship between four and 12, it's times 3. Ah, see, you got it. Now watch. Times 3 thirds here, because 4 times 3, yes, indeed, you do, is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. And so it's going to be the same here, that 1 fourth equals 3 twelfths. How many rows do we need? We need 3 rows. How many lines do we draw to create 3 rows? We draw 2 lines. Oh, this is exciting. All right, so now check yourself. We started with one out of four shaded in. Now we have one, two, three out of three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, we have three twelfths. <gasps> Math works. Crazy. All right, so now here we're going from four to sixteen. What's the relationship between four and sixteen? Times four. Four times four is sixteen. So right here, it'll be times four fourths. Because four times four, yes, is sixteen. One times four is course, 4. So we're positing here that 1 fourth equals 4 sixteenths. Now to create 4 rows here, right, because it's times 4, we're decomposing it to 4 rows. Um, I can remember our trick for fourths is I can split it in half and then split each of the halves in half. Bum, 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 bum. Fix those up a little bit. Okay, sweetness. All right, so now do I have, I started with 1 out of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 are now shaded in out of 4, 8, 12, 16, 4 sixteenths. Oh my goodness, not only do we smack that like a bad monkey, we uh, are done. Look at that, homework time is complete. Nice job. I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.